Hello, Will here from Dunkin Egg Bricks. This is a video I've been promising to make and really looking forward to making for quite some time now. There really isn't any other way to start it off except my saying, Welcome to Diagon Alley. I hope you can excuse my terrible impression and going for the easiest possible joke, but I really thought it was the perfect way to start things off. This, of course, is set 75978 Diagon Alley, released, I believe, at the beginning of 2020. I got this for Christmas 2021, so the Christmas just gone. Built it up on Christmas Day and Boxing Day, so it's been built for quite some time now, getting on for nearly two months. But I've actually put off doing the review video of it, just because I wanted to take some time, really gather my thoughts about the set as a whole, and then bring you a proper review, taking a look at all the details. Right now, this is how I've got it displayed. We've got the uh, two buildings on the side here and two on the side there. Obviously, they can be closed up to make a complete road down the middle, or a complete alley, I should say. Um, I initially had it displayed like that, but I did find that it uh, stopped a lot of light getting in there. And I think this way is a good compromise because it doesn't take up a huge amount of space left to right, but it does mean that I can get some, uh, get some good views into the alley and look at everything that's going on there. So I will get my sig fig out of the way and I think I'm going to take you through building by building. Now I'm sure everybody knows about this set by now, it's been out for long enough, but if you don't know it's actually made up of four distinct buildings, each on their own 16 by 32 base plate and I'm going to take you through them one by one. Now, there are four instruction booklets in the set, one for each, and there isn't a specified order, but the order that is kind of suggested by the box art, and I think by the way that uh, other builders have done it, is to start on the left here with Ollivanders and Scribulus, so I'm going to start with that one. I'm also going to show you the minifigs as I go. Um, if I tried to do them all in one go on my little minifig stand, it would take a long, long time, as there are quite a lot of them, but I've actually kept them with the associated buildings that they come as part of so I can show you them as we go. So let's get things onto the building desk and we'll take a look at Ollivanders and Scribulus first. Back when I wasn't sure if I was going to get the entire Diagon Alley set, this was the one building that I actually looked at buying separately. Obviously some people buy sets for just the figs or just particular buildings and then want to go and sell the rest on, and I did see a few sellers who were selling this at uh, obviously still quite a high price, but not as high as buying the entire set. You know, all things considered, I'm very glad that I decided to go for the entire set, uh, but this is a, possibly my favourite building. Um, I don't want to say that for definite, just coming straight out of the gate, but it is a really nice place to start. And um, it's possibly the most basic, uh, but also one of the most ornate and detailed, um, although that's not saying much because every single building in this set is very detailed. Before we take a look uh, in more detail at the front and also taking a look at the inside, let's take a look at the figures. First up is an exclusive fig for this set. This is, of course, uh, Mr. Garrick Ollivander, looking really good there. I think actually reusing or using a slightly altered version of a print that had come in a previous set, possibly the uh, small miniature Diagon Alley. Looks very good anyway. I think that top has actually been reused uh, in the advent calendar since, but it was exclusive at the time. Also comes with one of these wand boxes, which we've now seen quite a few more of, including one again in the advent calendar. It's just a one by three box. It's actually two plates high and uses a regular one by three tile as a lid. And there's space inside for just one standard wand. So they look very good. You get quite a number of them in this set. And at the time this came out, they were exclusive to this set. Ollivander looks good. He does have a second expression where he looks a little bit more uh, confused, maybe. Maybe that's the point at which uh, Harry's wand picks him. Great hairpiece and looks very nice. Perfect to go just outside his shop. And the other figure you get in these uh, bags, it's not just one bag for each building, but this collection of bags is, of course, Hermione. She uses a torso, which is used several times throughout this set, which is just generic uh, Gryffindor robes, which is appropriate for this scene. Reddish brown short legs and the standard Hermione face and hair we've come to expect for first and second year Hermione. Looks good, relatively generic. Um, there's quite a few of these figures in this set are relatively generic, but they do fit the scene. Right, that's the figs out of the way. Let's take a look properly at the build. So the frontage of this is so fantastic. 
I, I really can't even begin to describe how satisfying it is to put together and how nice it is when everything is finished and comes together. I think it's possibly just the sheer amount of windows and things in this set. There are a huge amount, particularly of the 1x2x2 windows in all sorts of colours. So a great building pack if you're looking to make some mocks out of this. But I think that just adds to the overall realistic effect. I absolutely love the trans-yellow glass in Ollivander's. It's not 100% realistic, but does give it that kind of old-timey, murky feel, which I think is really sensible for Ollivander's. There are a lot of stickers used in this set. I uh, did actually save, this, uh, save? save the sticker sheets, and I will show you the spent ones at the end of the video, because there are an awful lot of them. Um, but actually, they weren't too bad to apply. You've just got to be quite careful particularly at places where uh, there are two stickers, which are one word split across two stickers because it's two pieces. You've got to try and line them up as close to the edges as possible. I still think it looks really good. At the end of the day, it is Lego, so, you know, you're not expecting things to be 100% perfect and true to life. Speaking of which, the building is actually kind of cut short. Um, these are quite tall, but there are meant to be at least, uh, at least one more floor, maybe two, but to be honest, I think the overall effect is pretty good. I think they've compromised in a nice way um, so that you can have a decent sized building at a not too ridiculous price. Obviously, this is a very expensive set. It's the largest and most expensive set that I personally have ever owned. Um, you know, it, it's a lot of pieces. It's over, I think it's five and a half thousand pieces. Uh, with a price tagged match and I actually bought it just before the prices went down a little bit here in the UK so grr, I wish I'd waited a little bit longer. No I don't really, it was an amazing Christmas present. Moving over to Scribulus on the other side, this is a narrower frontage, obviously Ollivander's takes up a much wider part of this 32 wide base plate. Um, doesn't use quite as interesting details to get angles on the windows and stuff, but it is nice to get all this dark blue. Comes with a little uh, torch holder outside. And uh, again, more stickers showing the different things that are available. Um, there are, uh, I guess it's Galleon for reading, so there's obviously a fortune teller up here, which we'll see on the inside. Sticker advertising them there. Another couple of stickers for the name. And up above, we have got the Hedwig with the outstretched wings flying along carrying an edition of the Daily Prophet. We actually get a large amount of these printed pieces in this set. I'll show you them in the next part. Also another couple of owls here and they look good. It's always good to get these owls. They are quite expensive on the secondary market. Right, let's spin this round and take a look at the interiors. Given that these are built on a 16 by 32 base plate, you're not going to get a huge amount of depth in the interiors, especially when you take away the amount that's for the pavement and uh, roadway outside. But I actually quite like that. I think you still get a decent amount inside and it helps to do uh, make everything look very cluttered and disorganised, which is perfect especially for this building. So Ollivander's first over here, start with the ground floor. You can't see much in here at the moment, but they have dealt with that because you can swing this staircase out like that. Uh, it's not quite the same as the moving ladder, which is present in the, uh, in the shop in the film, but it's a kind of nice nod to it and it's a good way of using up the space. Folds completely flat, so uh, there's nothing sticking out at all, but then obviously rotates out and contains a bunch of detail underneath, trying to get some light under there. There's some more of those one boxes as well as simulated ones, which are just built out of normal parts. I think that's a good compromise, means you can get some colour variation in there, um, and obviously you don't have to then spend a lot on this uh, new and as I said at the time, exclusive mould. Other details on the uh, inside on the ground floor, a couple of golden lanterns hanging up in the window. Um, you've got some more wand boxes through there along with a candle. More wand boxes actually on a hinge being displayed. Don't know if you can see that properly through there. And then you've got a, um, a cash register and a quill stickered piece just there with some notes on it and some more wands built into the back if I can get it to focus just over there. Uh, it's a similar story upstairs, you've got a very similar bookcase just there. A ladder here which is actually loose which is kind of surprising, they could have just included a couple of modified tiles with clips to keep that down. Got a desk there with a wonderful use of another hinge as a open drawer, obviously you can't put anything in it and it wouldn't really bend up in real life but it makes it look good. More one boxes sitting up there, and then a uh, somewhat comfy looking chair in the corner. Obviously everything is accessed by this staircase, and then there is a balustrade to stop you falling off into what would be the rest of the shop coming towards the camera. Moving over to Scribulus, we've got a smaller interior to match the smaller exterior. There's an identical 
uh, sticker actually for this paper here, but that's fine. It doesn't actually say anything. It's just generic squiggles. Got a quill here, lantern here. Over to the side, we've got loads of writing supplies, including loads of quills in different colours, ink pots down below, rolls of parchment upstairs, uh, or on the upper shelves, I should say. And then actually in the window, I'll see if I can pop it out without causing too much damage. We've got a uh, another stickered piece with some of these uh, modified plates with Technic pinholes uh, to act as a scroll. I think this is the right way up. Just... Yeah, I think it is the right way up. Again, it's one of those uh, nonsense ones, which is just a bunch of squiggles, but simulates what you would uh, have on an actual page. And then upstairs, as I mentioned, the sign outside says that we've got uh, fortune telling that can happen in here. Got an unprinted, um, I think this is actually a Ninjago piece, an unprinted skull, uh, which is a very unusual piece, but looks very cool and very creepy like that, as well as a trans, uh, trans red minifig head some bits on the top to make a bottle. That's all on top of this uh, little chest of drawers type thing here. If I can get that back in the middle, there we go. To the side is a little sofa put on at an angle, which uses a sticker for the back. If I can focus it. But otherwise it's all built up around there and looks really, really nice. There is also a small fireplace just there, getting enough light in there to show you what's going on, uh, which doesn't have any fire in it at the moment, but looks pretty decent. So there we go, that was a very quick rushed look around the first building in this set, first one that I personally built, really enjoyed building it and putting it together, lots of fantastic little details. Okay, on to the next one. Next up we've got Quality Quidditch Supplies and The Daily Profit. This building is weird because it actually holds some of the best elements of the set for me and also some of the worst. Uh, not things I actively dislike, but things that I'm not as big a fan of as some of the other parts. Starting off once again with the figs, we get uh, a Ron Weasley here using the same torso as Hermione, sand blue legs and the standard Ron head that we've come to expect with the short hair, which looks good nonetheless. And then we have another exclusive fig, which is the Daily Prophet Photographer. He's not actually given a name, I don't think, in the books uh, or the films. It looks like a decent figure. He reuses a hat that was originally made for Scarecrow, the Batman villain, this time in a reddish brown and um, light bluish gray for the hair. It looks really good. Uh, an exclusive printed face with a smiling um, expression on that side and then a grumpy expression on that side and a great torso with a pinstriped um, jacket and then waistcoat underneath and a cravat. Looks very good overall. His accessory is a brick built camera, sort of old style camera with a big flash and that again looks really great. It's very few pieces, um, just makes use of them in the best possible way. This paddle piece here is actually serving a dual purpose of being the flash and also the place where he can hold the camera because that hand fits in there perfectly. He looks really good, ready to be some uh, annoying invasive paparazzi. Uh, incidentally, yes, he does use the small legs because the character in the film is relatively small. I think I will mention just before I go into the buildings, the pavement outside. It's obviously mainly using dark tan tiles and then some wedge plates, regular plates, and uh, that sort of seamlessly fits from one to the next. Even though there is some slight indentation and variation, it always starts and finishes with a two stud gap before the edge of the base plate, meaning you can put these buildings in any order and that will still match up. So that's really good, uh, very much like the modular buildings. In fact, I believe that these Technic pins uh, or pin holes, I should say, on the side are in the same position as the modular buildings. I can just check one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and then there. Yep, that's exactly the same. So if you want to, you you can line these up with modular buildings, although you might want to uh, make some sort of leaky cauldron or wait until Lego comes out with one, will they ever, um, in order for this not to be <laughs> immediately discoverable. Or of course you could repurpose it as uh, Robin Hood Bricks has done. I'm sure if you watch my videos, you've watched his videos before, uh, did a fantastic series where he converted his Diagon Alley into, a, uh, into an old town street. I have to say I was very jealous at the time as I know he's not a Harry Potter fan and the fact that he got Diagon Alley, oh, that made me very jealous. But anyway, I digress. On to quality Quidditch supplies first of all. The reason I say this is one of my favourite parts of the entire build is just for the shop frontage. If I turn this to the side you'll see probably why. The entire thing is at an angle. This is accurate to the film. Did they need to do this? No, not at all. It's a slight angle, it's very tiny, I can actually push it up. You can see that's literally just how much it goes down by. Just held it in by gravity, just falls down to the right place. 
Um, it necessitated the entire frontage being built as a separate part, and then it's all hinged by Technic pins. And it's completely unnecessary, but it just makes the whole thing work and looks absolutely fantastic. There we go with my favourite word again, haven't used in a while. Um, the windows on the front are a combination of uh, Transclear cheese slopes on the side, and then these bricks here, which are actually uh, one by two by five bricks in Transclear printed with this red pattern. There are two here, and then there are four over here, and uh, they work together nicely to make the two different sized windows. Very clever overall. Um, if I tilt this up a bit more, you can see these stickers saying quality Quidditch supplies under there, which look good. And then there's this sort of uh, almost pawnbroker's style um, sign hanging outside with two, um, I suppose it's, yeah, two quaffles and a golden stitch. Probably would have made more sense with two bludgers, but hey, the uh, quaffles look nicer in red. The top floor has uh, drawn some mm, interesting comments, given its pink shade. I actually quite like it. Um, I think Diagon Alley could possibly end up being a little bit too drab, um, and I think this pink is like a nice pop of colour. It's probably not 100% accurate, but I quite like it, and I definitely won't be changing it. We've got some more stickered signs outside, one saying Quidditch, one with the Hogwarts crest, presumably advertising that you can get your uh, Hogwarts Quidditch gear here. And then down at the end, we've got a sign for the Daily Profit. And uh, down below, we have got the entrance to said establishment, which looks amazing. Again, fantastic techniques to get this, uh, I suppose it's a, it's a cornice, I think is the right term. Um, at the top, you'll see how that's constructed on the inside. Large sticker for the door, which then can obviously open up. It's just a standard door, but looks fantastic. Um, it's a shame, though. This does look fantastic on the outside, uh, but when we get to the inside, you will see the problem I have with it and why this is also one of the bits I don't like. So let's spin it around and I will show you why that is. I'm definitely not the first person to comment on this, but uh, yeah, this is the Daily Profit. Just this. It, it's one floor down here. There's no floor up here and uh, there's a spider web and then we're at the roof. And I mean, there are a few more bits in there. There's some boxes and a rat and a bit of cheese. But uh, yeah, that's the Daily Profit. So I, I don't really know what they were going for here. Um, there's some nice details. I don't know if you can see there's a large sticker on this big panel piece here, which has a bunch of Daily Profit uh, headlines and cutouts. There's a wanted poster for Sirius Black. Um, there's actually this, which is quite nice, which is a, uh, a crate full of Daily Profits. It actually is a stack of uh, other parts which are uh, designed to make it look like there's a whole bunch of Daily Profits, but they're actually all stuck together. Just slot in there loosely. So, you know, that looks good. Um, also behind here, you can see the technique used for getting that roof in. Um, so you can see there's some slopes and then some tiles, uh, modified tiles, and then modified plates with bars. It's all very clever. I'm not sure why the spider's web, just maybe it's abandoned. Um, but anyway, I'll get back to that in a second. What I will focus on now is quality Quidditch supplies because this is really nice. Downstairs, we have got some uh, beater's bats on the side. We have got a bunch of Quidditch uniforms here. We've got a broomstick in the window, and uh, this is either a Firebolt or Nimbus 2001. It's using a similar technique to the uh, Hungarian Horntail set, where it uses this part, which is originally designed for sort of fireman's poles. If it'll focus on it. Uh, yeah, there we go. Used for uh, sort of fireman's poles as the uh, stirrups that these brooms do have. Looks nice, held in place just with a droid arm there. Uh, looks good on display and you can see it from the outside. Just having trouble getting it back on. There we go. And then there's one of two things in here which make this very nice and very exclusive. Um, and that is a Hufflepuff Quidditch uniform, something which when this uh, set came out, had never been seen before. The only exclusive piece is actually just the torso with the Hufflepuff print on the front and back. This is just in a regularly yellow. Um, and it's representing a mannequin in the window. Looks great. There is also a matching Ravenclaw fig up there, if I can focus on it too. Same deal there with a dark blue top. Now, um, the Ravenclaw one is still exclusive as of the time of reviewing. The Hufflepuff one has actually come in another set, which uh, wasn't a real set, it was actually a book with an exclusive Cedric Diggory minifigure. Use this torso again, but with Cedric Diggory head and hair. Um, I actually got that book uh, cheaply just to get the minifig and gave the book away. So I do have 
two of these now, um, although I really do like them in the shop, so I don't think I'll be trying to collect a full Hufflepuff or Ravenclaw Quidditch team at the moment, um, you know, especially for the Ravenclaw one, that's just going to get way too pricey, uh, but anyway, let's pop him back in there and then focus more on that top floor. It's a similar sort of deal to downstairs. We've got some more Quidditch uniforms over here, just formed by stacks of plates and jumpers. There is a trunk just here, which I believe has in it, yep, a couple of quaffles and also another beater's bat, so that looks good. Um, I did think there were some bludgers around here somewhere, but I'm not entirely sure where they've gone. Um, it may be that there weren't any bludgers, and I'm just imagining it, but there are definitely other sets where you can get them if necessary. So uh, we'll pop that back for now. There's another couple of brooms up here, and there is a sign that says, feel free to test fly any of our brooms, which seems like a very dangerous thing to do inside. Right, so going back to the Daily Profit, what on earth is going on there? It seems like a massive design oversight, and actually taking a look at quality Quidditch supplies, there is a huge amount of space in here. There's a lot of open floor that there wasn't in the other buildings, and uh, I'm, I'm just quite tempted to do some modifications. Um, I've actually done some uh, sort of experimenting so far. My idea, and I don't think I've seen anybody else do this, but, uh, you know, call me out on it if I'm wrong. My idea would actually be to take everything that is quality Quidditch supplies related and put it down here. Um, obviously, I would probably get rid of one of these racks of uh, Quidditch uniform just because that would be doubling things up. But I could put both mannequins, the brooms, the trunk down here, and then we'd actually have a completely free floor up here. Um, we would then have to find a way to actually get to it. And for that reason, I've been experimenting with spiral staircases so this is what i'm at at the moment um, just a very rudimentary design using one by four plates one by one round plates and then a lot of one by two uh, modified tiles the grill tiles um, and i'm hoping what i can do is actually create a spiral staircase in this space just here that will spiral all the way up here, remove this panel in the wall just there, and actually create this as my daily profit. Um, because apart from this area down here, there is, like I said, just that roof space up there, and uh, there are, in fact, a couple of um, daily profits getting wet on the roof out there. Uh, this is Britain, after all. So, uh, yeah, I think that's what I'm going to do. And again, taking a page out of Robin Hood Brick's book, I'm going to try and create uh, some sort of printing press, uh, like he did for his Daily Bugle build, and uh, also some desks. And, you know, maybe if we ever get, like, a Rita Skeeter figure or anything like that, there'll be a desk for her or something like that. So, uh, yeah, that could be could be interesting. And I think we'll just be a better use of space. Um, I wonder if, if, for whatever reason, they decided that they weren't going to go for that or that it was too much or they had too much stuff to do in the Quidditch area. I really don't know. Um, give me your ideas if you uh, have anything different you would suggest that I do with it. Uh, but I think that's what I am going to do with my quality Quidditch supplies. Anyway, I have waffled on far too long about stuff that I'm going to do to it in the future, and that isn't even present now. So I think we should get on to the next building. So with half of the buildings reviewed, we are now at the last bit of the uh, alley, which actually has two distinct buildings really on one base plate. This is Flourish and Blot's bookshop and Florian Fortescue's ice cream parlour. Two buildings which I don't know if they're technically meant to be next to one another, but they look really good with the uh, tan, dark brown and cool yellow really complementing complementing all the different shades of green over on this side. We also get more figures in this set, or in this part of the set, I should say. Starting over here on the left with Florian Fortescue himself. He's a character who very briefly appears, a sort of blink and you'll miss him cameo on screen. He actually has a slightly larger role in Prisoner of Azkaban, where he helps Harry with his homework while Harry's staying at the Leaky Cauldron, and is then unceremoniously kidnapped and uh, is never seen again in Half-Blood Prince. I believe it was uh, said that there was originally going to be some plot points involving him in Deathly Hallows, which were later dropped. So uh, yeah, we have no idea what happened to him, but he looks pretty cheerful for the moment. It's an exclusive torso print and face print. 
And if we swap him around, he looks a little bit more glum back there. Perhaps he's found out what happens to his book character. Comes with one of these uh, newer sort of martini glass type pieces in trans orange. Um, one came with the uh, collectible minifigure series 2 Ginny in uh, trans clear. Obviously representing a sort of Sunday glass type thing here. Um, so that looks good. Speaking of Ginny, we get a version of her in her, um, not actually Hogwarts uniform, um, but in this pink top, which looks pretty good. Comes with standard hair that we've had for Ginny for quite a while and a standard Ginny type face, which also has been used for Susan Bones and I think possibly Luna Lovegood as well. But anyway, um, yep, she looks good. This is uh, pre Hogwarts Ginny, so uh, just about to get the uh, Tom Riddle's diary put in her cauldron by Lucius Malfoy, who we will see later. Of course, can't be a Harry Potter set without Harry Potter. There is nothing super special about this guy at all. That same torso as Ron and Hermione, same head, same hair. Um, although, actually, nope, I tell a complete lie. It's not the same head. This is a head that uh, I think only appears in this set, if I'm not wrong. Um, it actually represents Harry after he's travelled through the uh, flu network in Chamber of Secrets and has come out rather worse for wear. Some nice detailing including a crack, uh, focus again, a crack across her, uh, her across uh, his left glass of his glasses, his left lens, I should say, and some soot prints all over his face. So uh, although there isn't a Borgen and Burks in this set, you can have Hagrid rescuing Harry from uh, Nocturne Alley. Next up is Mrs. Weasley. This is a nice figure, uses the uh, dress piece in plain dark brown and then a printed torso piece, still using Helga Hufflepuff's face print, which isn't entirely correct, but looks OK. I think it's just a shame there's uh, two figures in the same uh, line use it. Don't really care so much if it's, you know, one from one franchise, like a Marvel character or something like that, and then one from Harry Potter, but uh, two in the same feels a bit lazy. Um, looks good, though, comes with the uh, Kira uh, hairpiece, which I think some people did suggest should be used for uh, uh, Goblet of Fire Ron as well, which is uh, <laughs> it's actually quite accurate. Um, she comes with one of several, in fact I can see I think two or three uh, books, which are Magical Me by Gilderoy Lockhart. This is another sticker and inside is blank, unfortunately. I feel like they could have printed it, seeing as there's uh, more than one in this set, but hey-ho, that's uh, not the end of the world. And uh, lastly, and definitely not least in this bit of the set, is Gilderoy Lockhart in a fabulous um, lavender suit with a gold waistcoat, an amazing cape, which is uh, that same lavender on the outside, and then a sort of gold and yellow on the inside, very Lando Calrissian. At the time this came out, this was the first um, sort of flesh-coloured Gilderoy Lockhart that we had ever had. He'd only come out previously when the Chamber of Secrets film came out, which is back when Lego was still using yellow skins for the uh, licensed characters, and the uh, obviously graphic design and things were very different, so it's amazing to get one here. He was exclusive when he came out here, and indeed this figure is. Um, you can now get Lockhart in the uh, Chamber of Secrets set, the Hogwarts Chamber of Secrets that came out um, last year, I think, um, which I previously reviewed, and I will try to put a link in the corner for, um, but he comes in a different uh, costume there. It comes with a smirk on the front and then a little bit of a worried face on the back as people are about to find out that he is a massive fraud. Uh, but yeah, it looks really great there. So glad to get a Lockhart. There are still so many characters that they really need to do and uh, I look forward to each new one that they create. Right, on to the actual buildings. That was a lot of figures. So uh, let's go with Fortescue's first. Um, this is nice. We don't really get to see much of this in the films. So they had a bit of license to play around with it. I love this canopy. It's the simplest possible build. It's just plates on their side um, with a tile capping it off at the top. All just put on with clips, but it looks really good. It's uh, held up. Uh, doesn't actually get held up by them, but there are uh, black lipstick pieces just here. Um, so it's sort of dual molded, but both colours are black. Um, um, and they just act as supports underneath. Um, it's the kind of thing where it would probably be done with the newer too long bar that now exists, didn't exist at the time. It's not structural or anything, but uh, I think that looks really good. Get a couple of chairs out front. They're actually completely loose because they use these uh, fang or tooth pieces as their legs. Uh, I think that's a little bit of an oversight. While they look good, it's annoying that they rattle around and I'm pretty sure other people have modified them so that they have uh, a different base that keeps them still and I may well do the same. 
We don't actually get uh, any sort of sign for the ice cream parlor, stickered or otherwise. The only thing we get is this 3D sign up here, which I would say, I keep mentioning in the, him in this review, uh, Robin Hood Bricks would love, but actually he changed his. Um, I quite like it. It's got a table with uh, what's probably, looks like it could be grapes, uh, so maybe it's wine. Uh, but no, it's uh, probably purple ice cream in the middle, and then a couple of chairs, um, one on either side. I think that looks pretty decent. It fits in well with the dark brown roof. Moving over to Flourish and Blots, this is a more complicated uh, frontage and looks really good. We've got a different kind of printed window piece. These are actually uh, one by six by five, um, I'm going to say bricks rather than panels, I think, um, printed with this green design because they are the same size. Out front, we've got these, uh, which are probably sort of bargain books or something like that, ones that they haven't been able to sell otherwise. I'll just pull one of them off. They're just simple builds with a bunch of plates and tiles and modified plates and slopes and all sorts of things. Lots of different colours, making it look like there's a whole pile of books there. Slightly different on each side, and they just clip in, if I can get this one back on on camera. Yeah, there we go. They just clip in place at an angle and look really nice. Around the uh, top, we have got all of these uh, little signs. They're all stickers. Um, they're all on tiles, just saying bookseller, bookbinder, reading room. And then I think it's a repeat. Yep, repeat around the other side. We've also got the Flourish and Blot sign outside, which is double sided and just hangs there, which looks really nice. And um, we've also got these uh, wonderful little sort of gargoyle pieces at the front. Um, I don't know if I can show you them properly. They actually use a Ninjago piece, which is a dragon hilt, um, which I think is still in use. Uh, they, we've moulded that into black, a couple of divers flippers on the side as wings, and then some slopes to complete the body, and there's one on either side, and they look really good. They're completely unnecessary, um, but they're nice detailing nonetheless. Um, obviously this nice bay window at the top, making use of some large slope pieces, and then a, uh, a fairly dull black roof, but uh, it is nice that it changes from the uh, longer slopes to shorter, and then to the 45 degree ones. Right, you know the drill, inside the building. Inside is a similar sort of deal to uh, Ollivander's and Scribulus. We've got the uh, Flourish and Blots on this side. There's a couple of stickers just under there showing you different kinds of books you can be looking for. We've got another set of stairs done in a different way here. Instead of folding, uh, or sorry, instead of rotating, these ones actually do fold upwards. They don't go... Actually, they do go all the way. What am I talking about? They go all the way up like that, showing you uh, what's underneath, which is not a huge amount, but it does let you get to the window display there. Um, this again means you can place things back to back if you really want to. Saves a lot of space, but they do look quite nice when they come down. There's this pillar here, quite ornate. Um, actually looks to me a bit like um, the designs used for the um, uh, Minds of Moria in the Lord of the Rings sets. Um, you know, bring back Lord of the Rings! Um, I'm very much championing that. But anyway, back to Harry Potter. Um, there's some fantastic book designs here to make this stack of books just here. Lots of use of the um, one by one rounded slope top type pieces. Um, this piece. Um, which makes a really good uh, spine for a big hardback book. And there are a couple here as well, just a stack of them that are actually attached to the side of this writing desk. This desk uh, is actually meant for uh, Lockhart to be signing autographs and doesn't really have a place. Um, you can just pop it straight down onto the floor there, but it's really designed to be out here in the sort of imaginary space. Um, I've actually taken to keeping it just up here where it's nice and out of the way. Got a couple of larger bookshelves, um, which use similar designs to the ones outside, but just on a larger scale, one down here, one up here, um, and they look good overall. Loads of books, which, I mean, duh, it's a bookshop, um, but, uh, you know, things like the uh, modular bookshop really didn't have that many books in it, so it's nice to see one that does. Upstairs, it's basically more of the same. We've actually got a uh, book here with the printed Wingardium Leviosa tile, which is nice. Uh, poster maybe advertising Flourish and Blots within Flourish and Blots doesn't make a huge amount of sense but hey whatever um, got to make sure you know which brand you're buying from and uh, yeah that pretty much completes Flourish and Blots it really does look better with minifigs inside um, and as is shown on the uh, box and uh, pictures online and things like that so uh, yeah it's uh, plenty of space for posing figures which is important on the other side, we have got the ice cream parlour itself. Um, seems to be takeaway only, as there are no seats inside. There's a menu up on the wall there. What's today's suggestion is... Chocolate with peanut butter, black beer and raisin. 
that juice and earring. Um, yeah, probably not going to go for... Well, I might go for the chocolate and peanut butter. Anyway, the design overall is quite nice. There's a few more of those. Um, in fact, just one more of those martini glass style things with a couple of... Uh, in fact, three other goblets, one there with some ice cream in it. No sign of actually where the um, ice cream is stored, so we kind of have to assume it's under there or else it's uh, stored somewhere using an undetectable extension charm. There's also this just here, which I've forgotten the name of, but it's that kind of uh, glass dome that you put over a cake or something else. Obviously, there's no room for actually anything inside, and this uses another one of those lipstick pieces um, just to hold the top on. Again, I would think they would use a too long bar nowadays, um, which uh, obviously didn't exist. So yep, yeah, there we go. Plenty of use of cool yellow, which is a colour I don't have much of because it's relatively recent. And then upstairs is, uh, well, in this case, I think it's actually part of the same building. It's either somewhere for people to sit or more likely a little study for Florian himself to sit around and wait to be kidnapped. Uh, there's a lamp here, which actually uses a sausage piece to hold the main uh, lampshade on. Small table with a teapot and cup, and then a chair, which uh, you can sit a figure in, but uh, does have this very conspicuous technic hole, which makes it look a little bit like a porta potty. Um, so yeah, that is all of this building. Time to go on to the very last part of Diagon Alley. And how else could you round out a visit than by taking a trip to the uh, home of modern magic, Weasley's Wizard Wheezes. This is, uh, I mean, just to look at, is a truly ridiculous building. It looks ridiculous in the films and looks just as ridiculous in Lego form, and I'm really happy about that. The colour scheme of orange and lavender is fantastic and jarring and clashing, and that is just a good, good thing. Um, anyway, the last few minifigs of the main set are Lucius Malfoy here. This is uh, well, actually not the not the um, not the first time we've got Lucius Malfoy since the uh, Chamber of Secrets sets come out. We actually had him as a Death Eater version a couple of times, I think. But this is by far the most ornate version we've got, with a fantastic printed um, sort of fur collar and clasp. Uses that uh, leg piece, which has been used several times with robe printing on it. It doesn't actually come with an exclusive face, which is odd, and I think it's only one sided. Uh, I mean, it, it does suit him, um, and the hair piece, uh, you know, definitely works. It's that one that was originally made for Dumbledore. Um, but yeah, it's, it's a shame that the hairpiece wasn't better. And also um, his cane that has his wand in it, it, does, it just doesn't look right, does it? It doesn't look right without anything on the top. Um, I know some people have made some suggestions um, from putting a one by one round plate with a hole in it on the top, a silver one or a light bluish grey one. I don't think they come in silver. Um, to some people who've actually cut the head off um, a little Ninjago snake part and then glued it onto the top, which looks great. But I'm not going to be doing that because I don't believe in doing that to Lego. Um, but anyway, yeah, looks like a very good figure, very stern. Uh, he's now not exclusive, I think. Again, he comes in a book. Um, but uh, this is a good way to get him. And where Lucius is, Draco will follow in order to tell his father about this. Um, he is the only student who comes with a uh, different top here. This is one uh, which I think we've seen again in the um, Polyjuice Potion set, where I think all three of them had it on. Um, but Draco looks good. Comes with the standard hairpiece that we've seen him with uh, quite a few times. Comes with a more angry expression on the back. Not much to talk about with that figure. However, these are the standouts of this part of the set. They are, of course, Fred and George Weasley. And I could not begin to tell you which one is which. Um, I have looked it up several times, which one is supposed to be which, because they are wearing different coloured waistcoats. That's something that uh, Lego didn't need to do, but it is accurate to the film. And uh, yeah, I, I've, I've looked it up and I can't remember which one's which, but they look good anyway. Um, they've got different uh, heads, I believe, different facial expressions. Yeah, yeah, completely different. Um, so actually between them, you've got four expressions. Um, you sort of wry smile, open mouth grin, <laughs> laughing, and then laughing differently. So even those two are different, those two, you know, they look great. Um, I've just dropped one of their hair pieces. So uh, sorry, Fred or George, you will have to be bald for a second. Um, yeah, they just look so good. The detail on the uh, waistcoat is fantastic on the front and on the back. And uh, it's just really nice to get them. You know, there are a lot of uh, characters in Harry Potter who appear uh, lots of times, um, Fred and George included, and uh, we just don't get to see them that often in Lego. Um, I know they're bringing out a Percy minifigure in a uh, upcoming book, I think. 
definitely going to get my hands on him. Then we just need a Bill and a, a Charlie, if Charlie ever appears at all. It's the only time he appears in the films is actually in the uh, moving picture of Ron's family on holiday to Egypt. So who knows, maybe we'll get a Charlie at some point so we can finally complete the Weasley family. Right, let's get on and take a look at the building uh, just after I have picked up Fred or George's hair. So that's the hair regrowing charm activated and we can take a look at the building proper. Um, it is fantastic. Um, I know I said that it is the, uh, or rather the last building was the last one that had two different businesses. This technically does have another separate bit on it. It has the entrance to Nocturne Alley, which is just there using a sticker. Put that off at an angle, make it look all crooked. Um, it's not really a building, is it? Um, it's just a little addition on the side, which means that you can get this corner shape and it looks really nice. Um, yeah, as you can see, there's nothing to it. Spoilers for the inside. Um, yeah, the outside looks amazing. Um, it really does use a lot of stickers is the only thing. Um, and it's particularly um, falls foul of the words split over multiple stickers over multiple pieces. Um, so you can only line it up so much, you know, Weasley's Wiz Odd uh, eases um, is about as best as I could manage, but you know, I think it looks pretty good overall, short of coming up with brand new pieces to either sticker or print on there. There's not much you can do, really. I like this design outside just here. Uh, it can spin, no, it can't spin. I can just break it while I do that. <laughs> Why did I think it could spin? Um, it looks good anyway. I mean, it physically can spin, just not very freely. Um, I think it's actually meant to be uh, cutouts of figures. As you can tell, it's quite fragile, um, which it definitely isn't here. But I think the approximate shaping is nice, especially from a distance. Get a few lanterns scattered throughout the build as well. Obviously, this corner technique to get these rounded windows is fantastic seen other people copy it and turn it into uh, city themed buildings and then uh, the very conspicuous statue of Fred and George that sticks up right through the middle we've got the legs all the way down and then the torso one arm coming out here one up here I will uh, admit straight off the bat I have made an alteration right here where you see the character's eyes um, those are actually pieces which are not included in the set they are one by one uh, white plates with a small black square printed on the edge um, I can't remember what they're, I think they might be from an architecture set or something like that. I'm not the first person to come up with this design. Um, in the original set, they are just completely black. So where you can see white just there and there, the entire thing is black. It looks fine, um, but I think this does look better overall. It means just some small changes inside, but you don't lose any structural stability. There is uh, the set's really only action feature, um, which is that there is a little lever behind just here. And when you actuate it, the hat goes up and down. That's it. It looks fine. Um, there's no rabbit or anything. No rabbit appears. Um, not that there'd be anywhere for the rabbit to go inside the hat. And you could say it's maybe a little bit unnecessary, um, but I think it looks quite good. Uh, it doesn't take away too much from the build. Um, and, you know, it's a little bit of fun. So uh, who cares? Right. Inside the building one last time. You saw the inside very briefly there before. It is a complete riot of colour, even more colours than the outside, all of them clashing wonderfully. Um, it looks like a huge, crazy maze of paths leading everywhere and staircases and everything. It was actually really fun to put together. Um, it's a little bit difficult to access. Uh, this does swing out here, just balloons using the uh, BB-8 body in black and spring green. It looked great, so that could actually be inside or outside the building. And uh, yeah, we've got staircases that go from the bottom all the way up there along that landing, up another staircase and another staircase to the top floor. Um, so there really is a lot going on there. It's mostly sticker detail. Um, if it's not, I will point it out. You've got a dancing doxy box there. Uh, this is the cash register. Then you've got, um, just knocking minifigs over, you've got a stack of shelves here. These are actually quite crafty because they help to support the uh, support the next floor. And indeed, there's a similar thing on the roof uh, on the next floor above. Got some shelves back there using some pieces with glitter in them, which look really good. Uh, potions and things like that. They're not specifically labelled. Here we've actually got some Minecraft heads in green with stickers on them. I've not actually had any of these pieces before. It's very odd to get a piece that's actually cube shaped in Lego, which, uh, you know, each their own. I think it looks good in the end. And uh, yeah, moving up, there's another light just there, or lantern, I should say. Um, at the back here, these pieces have actually fallen down. They are meant to be on the top, but I can show you them more easily. So we have got here Fred Weasley's basic blaze box. So these are their fireworks that they come out with and uh, have scared Umbridge with. There's a whole stack of them at the back, just hiding behind the staircase there. 
Um, oh, it really doesn't want to focus with all these things there. Um, yep, yeah, that looks great. There's another stack of things just there. I'm going to have to pick the camera up. A uh, stack of things just there, which are, again, holding up the floor above, but uh, we'll pretend they're not. And the back of the torso of the figure has actually got a bunch of stuff on it as well at an angle, which is a really good use of space. And then finally, up to the top floor, there's one of those gem pieces with the dual molded trans pink inside, which looks good. More sticker pieces, more pieces stacked up, more stuff on shelves, a couple of little mannequins. Um, and then there's not really much through that, but you can see the internal structure of how the roof is put together. So yeah, it is a crazy mess of stuff going on. Um, it looks even better, as does this entire set with lots of figures standing up and walking around. Um, but yeah, that is Weasley's Wizard Wheezes, a delightful mess of ridiculousness and uh, all sorts of stuff. In fact, there is actually one last thing, which is just this. It's just a freestanding build. It's uh, presumably the Love Potions, uses a lot of those heart elements, um, which are trans dark pink, I want to say. Um, and they just have a bar attachment and they obviously don't like to be focused on. No, no, it doesn't like it, but you can see what they are anyway. Um, yeah, it uses a bunch of those and uh, looks really great overall. It's even, no, I'm not even going to try and mention what that is underneath. Uh, you can chat about it in comments. Um, you can kind of fit it inside here, but it will be loose and rattle around. So anyway, that is Diagon Alley. That is all the buildings in the set and uh, not quite all the minifigs. Um, I doubt this will be a surprise to anybody because this set has been out for so long now. Um, but while there are 20 official bags in this set, there is actually a 21 which people were not told about before this set came out. Of course, I spoiled it for myself a long time ago, so it wasn't a surprise to me. But it was nevertheless a nice little treat and I will show you what came inside that. So this is box or bag 21, as it says on it, silencio, keep it between us. Um, I think it's way past the time where I really need to bother with that. So inside this little box, you get this. Uh, now, Hagrid is uh, technically part of Diagon Alley at large, so he's not anything extra we didn't know we were getting about. Just the standard Hagrid that we've had quite a few times now. Nice to get another one of him. But this is, uh, this is the surprise. So it's a little stand with a version of Harry, which was exclusive at the time, now has appeared in the advent calendar, which I have previously reviewed extensively, um, but also this printed 6x6 tile, which says, Welcome Harry to Diagon Alley, Rubius Hagrid, Lego Harry Potter. So, it, you know, it's not many pieces, it's an exclusive print for the torso, exclusive print for this. Um, it was completely unnecessary, but it's just such a lovely tribute. Um, Diagon Alley is the place where Harry got introduced to the wizarding world, and uh, this just means that you can have that introduction. Uh, would it be nice if there was a leaky cauldron in this set, but got my fingers crossed that that's going to be coming in an expansion. We know there's going to be a uh, quite expensive direct-to-consumer set coming out later this year, so uh, fingers crossed for a Diagon Alley expansion, which I will definitely be getting my hands on to add to this. Um, I have also been designing my own Leaky Cauldron, but I'm kind of wary on moving ahead with that, uh, in just in case LEGO does come out with one. Um, so, you know, I do like my mocks, but if LEGO's going to make an official one, I want to see what that's like before deciding if I want it or not. Right, that really is the end of the video. Um, there's uh, not much more to say about it other than it's fantastic, and I can't believe it took me that long to get the review out. I enjoyed every minute of building it, and I was really sad when it was over. Um, obviously, you know, uh, Lego is uh, partly about the building, partly about enjoying what you've built. Um, so I'm really great. Uh, really, I'm really great. I'm really grateful to have this as part of my collection. Um, I want to say thanks again to my wonderful fiance Izzy, who uh, <laughs> decided she wanted to get me an engagement present, and uh, rather than going for anything, actually you know, uh, sentimental, uh, agreed to help pay for a huge child's toy for me. Um, so thank you for your understanding. I don't know how you do it. Um, anyway, a uh, couple of last things to show you, which are the uh, instruction manuals, the box and the spent sticker sheet. And then I will wrap up and say goodbye. Here are the instruction books. They're all exactly the same size and uh, roughly the same thickness. I seem to have actually spilt something on one there. Oh no! Oh well, you know what, the box is going in the bin, and as long as the instructions are readable, I don't really care. Um, I was wrong, by the way, there are numbers on each of these books, one, two, three, four, and I built them in this order, but there isn't anything stopping you from building it in the different order. Um, you know, none of them is reliant upon any of the others, so build whichever you want, 
split it four ways, you know, you know, have a sort of family building session or friends building session or something like that. Uh, but anyway, yeah, so I will show you the sticker sheet. So that's the sticker sheet for um, Ollivanders and Scribulus. Not too bad. These circular ones uh, I thought were going to be a bit difficult to place. They weren't as bad as I thought. Uh, moving on to the second one. A bit larger stickers there, including a big one for a panel. These ones for a large flag piece. Again, not terrible. Um, I think because it's such a large set, there are that many stickers and it can be a bit daunting. But because it's broken up into four parts, it's not so bad. Uh, this one, again, smaller, just quite a few of those ones to go around the bay window. And then this one is where the stickers really are. <whistles> that is an awful lot. Um, some of them are identical. Um, these ones, for instance, all go on the large figure of Fred or George. Um, and a lot of these go on the outside, these orange ones here. Um, and uh, the rest of them really go on products all over. So, uh, yeah, it's, it, this was the most daunting. And it's also the last one you do. So I suppose you get a little bit of experience beforehand. So it's not too bad. And um, this also means I can show you what the figure looked like. There it is with the black eyes. Uh, at the time, it looked fine. But now I've changed it over. Uh, this does look a bit sort of, you know, soulless or staring into your soul. So uh, glad I changed that over. Finally, there, of course, is the box, which I'm going to have to pull the camera back a little bit for go over and grab it it's of course an enormous box you get this white one inside just helps to stop the parts being crushed Let's see if i can get this up on the desk i'm not going to be able to get much light on it oh no that's not too bad so uh yeah there we go that's the box it's enormous um i actually really like the box art it's nice and colorful i'm glad this came out before the 18 plus branding um because compared to the box for the hogwarts icons which i've got just here isn't quite as big because it's not quite as big a set uh, i mean that does look quite classy but i think for something like diagon alley the uh, colors just look much better and uh yeah hopefully we'll have a return to form with any future expansions so there we go that was diagon alley set number 75978 i really enjoyed building it i really look forward to expansions in the future and i uh, just hope i have enough money in order to actually go ahead and buy it um because uh, they are very expensive but believe me it's really worth it don't think it's retiring anytime soon but if you're thinking about it from my perspective at least i would say go for it thank you so much for watching and thanks for your patience in getting this video out if you've got to the end well done i've barely made it to the end if you enjoyed, then please subscribe to the channel, like the video, comment down below. I'll get back to you. Let me know your thoughts about this set. And if you want to support me, you can either click on my affiliate link for lego.com or you can go to my Patreon. Thanks once again for watching and till next time, have a good one.